Well, hello everyone. It's Thanksgiving and I've just stuffed myself on a good dinner and I thought I'd sit down and make a video here. Um, you know, when I started this channel, what I was thinking is I would talk about the difficult and interesting questions in biology. And what happens instead? I make a few videos like the one I made rebutting uh, the movie um, that Eric Hoven just came out with and I get creationists and creationists ask stupid questions. So the stupid question of the day that I thought I would just whip out an answer to is this one. Are humans animals? This isn't a particularly interesting question because we know the answer to it already. Uh, it's not even as interesting as what is the ontological status of Squid Girl? She's part squid and part girl. There's an interesting dilemma there and something worth discussing at length. But no, I am going to deal with a really kind of simple-minded question about whether humans are actually animals. So what happened is this guy, Jonathan Williams, came along in, in that video about uh, the um, creation science m movie, and he's asking this question. Well, multiple questions, multiple assertions. Basically, he's just kind of vomiting creationist crap at me. Uh, this is a really common thing they do, is they just throw everything at you all at once. So look at all this stuff. Uh, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to not be believed because we're a minority. What? We don't make anything. Uh, I don't think that's true. Uh, you know, the, it, we're not popular. Our worldview is crap. This kind of stuff is not helpful. It does not lead to any answers. Uh, this is actually a very common sort of strategy that they take those. They just dump everything on you, whole string of accusations, and then you're expected to answer them all. Just a hint, when this kind of thing comes along your way, don't fall for it. Just don't accept it. So what I did is I got this big pile of crap here and I just said, okay, let's focus. I told him, you made a lot of scattershot assertions, but we should deal with them one at a time. So he's saying I'm wrong on everything, even biology, which is a remarkable thing to suggest. So I said, OK, be specific. What about biology have I got wrong? One thing, any one thing. Now, if you've dealt with creations before, you know how they will respond to this. They cannot say just one thing, any one thing. And that's true for this guy, although he did, he did cut it down quite a bit at least. So here's his answer to that. He says, first of all, human beings are not animals. Think about that for a minute. That's, that's just remarkable. And then of course he has to throw in a second Darwin's theory of evolution is false simply because it's unobservable and te untestable. I've heard that many times. That is also false. And then he says, we haven't even gotten into morality. So I'm going to count this as two and a half responses to my uh, request for one thing to discuss. But OK, so human beings are not animals. And I'm wrong in that. Hmm. So here's what I replied with. I said, no, humans are most definitely animals. What do you think they are? Mushrooms or algae? Uh, physiologically, anatomically, and biochemically, we're nearly identical to chimps. And I think that this person would also agree that those are animals. So what is there to exclude us from the category of animals? And then because I'm such a nice and generous guy, I also told him that, yeah, evolution has been observed and tested. And I gave him an example, the work of Peter and Rosemary Grant's work uh, I'm going to recommend to you, there's a book, uh, Peter and Rosemary Grant's How and Why Species Multiply, The Radiation of Darwin's Finches. It's a really good book. It goes into great detail on all the observations that they've made in the Galapagos Islands. And then I simply told him, no, you're not going to get into morality. Uh, take one thing at a time. If you can't even address one single simple point, 
we're not going to go off into the weeds and get into details on lots of other irrelevant things. So address this one thing. So he said, so I told him, no, they're, they're definitely animals. And he replied, okay, human beings are not an animal. They are not part of the animalia kingdom. So right there, that shuts me down. Um, okay, that's not true. Not in any classification scheme I know of, but okay. And then his reasoning is that other animals, are, I mean, other animals other than human beings who are not animals are not capable of reason or logic. Well, first of all, that's not true. Other animals may not have the degree of abstract reasoning that we have, but they certainly are capable of problem solving and thinking. Um, they're also aware of themselves and perceive the universe around them. So that's, um, I, I have no idea where he gets this idea. Maybe he's very lonely and has never had a pet. Get a goldfish. Even goldfish demonstrate some interesting intellectual abilities. Again, not as anywhere near what we do, but they're still capable of some limited forms of reasoning. All right, how am I going to address this though? So I thought about it a bit, and then I decided it's time to make the donuts. Let's make a donut analogy and see if this will sink in. Uh, so here we are, we're looking at the primordial donut dough. We're making donuts here from this. Uh, and then we're going to use this, do this donut dough to make, for instance, a plain donut. Are you with me so far? You're going to agree with me, that's a donut, right? And then when you start with a plain donut, you can also do fancy things like make a glazed variety. Or how about pink frosting? I think you agree. These are still all donuts, correct? Even though they're different from one another. We can go even crazier. Sprinkles. Let's put sprinkles on them. Uh, we can also do things like put a few sprinkles on, or we can make a donut with lots and lots of sprinkles. Now I ask you, is the donut with lots and lots of sprinkles, isn't it still a donut? Did putting sprinkles on it suddenly make it non-donut-like? Does it make it even less donut-like than a donut that's got a few sprinkles on it? This, this is the kind of logical trap that he's trying to put us in. Uh, I would say that, yeah, that's, those are all still donuts. You don't get to define them in a negative sense by simply saying that all donuts lack sprinkles. Therefore, the ones with sprinkles are not donuts anymore. That's not a logical uh, approach to it. Also, I'd like to point out, this is the same sort of pattern we see in other organisms. And instead of the primordial donut dough, we have eukaryotes, so cells with nuclei. Uh, then we have a worm-like creature. It's a eukaryote still, but it's multicellular, and it's a bilaterian animal. The bilaterian animals, they could split into all oh, the arthropods, which are still eukaryotic, multicellular, and bilaterian. And the tetrapods, which are still eukaryotic, multicellular, and bilateral. And further, we can then categorize those uh, other species as primates. And primates are still eukaryotic, multicellular, bilaterian, and tetrapodal. They still have four limbs. This is just a simple hierarchy to describe the factual distribution of attributes of these particular organisms. Now, one key thing about this is, as I've done it here, uh, you know, I was getting a lot of complaints that I'm a typical atheist or something like that. This is not an atheist argument. It's not atheist at all. Uh, what I've just shown you is simply the Linnaean classification scheme that was formulated by Carl Linnaeus in the 18th century. Uh, Linnaeus, Linnaeus was devout. He was a son of a Lutheran pastor. Yeah, he was a PK, a pastor's kid. 
And look what he wrote about this. He says, The Earth's creation is by the glory of God, is seen from the works of nature by man alone. The study of nature would reveal the divine order of God's creation, and it was a naturalist task to construct a natural classification that would reveal this order in the universe. Now, as an atheist, I don't buy the divine works and the God stuff, uh, but I can sympathize with this guy. He's got, he's got a worldview in which he sees the world as the product of divinity, and he's noticing that it's a rational, organized world. And he says, okay, our job as, as systematists, is, as taxonomists, is to organize this and understand that order. So this is not an atheist argument at all I'm making. This was from a, this was from a pastor's kid, a devout Lutheran, who classified humans as part of the animal kingdom, quite to the contrary of what Mr. Jonathan Williams was saying. Furthermore, this is not only not an atheist argument, it's not an evolutionary argument. So Linnaeus worked the century before Darwin. He assumed biblical creation was a correct description of the beginnings of the world. And he used the observable properties of living organisms, not the framework of evolutionary thought, evolutionary thought to categorize them. This is a classification scheme devised by a creationist. I'm perfectly happy with it. Why aren't the creationists? So anyway, this is the kind of thing you get all the time uh, from creationists. They don't even understand the background to the theories that they are criticizing. So here we got poor Jonathan Williams, who's uh, making these assertions that are contrary to the established work of hundreds of years and pretending that he has more scientific inside information than any scientist. Anyway, go have fun with some creationists. They're pretty easy to pick on. Uh, biggest tip is, like I said, always narrow the topic down. Focus on something. Don't let them go crazy and ramble all over the place. And then they're pretty easy to deal with. Okay, thanks. It's been fun.